I'm sure a lot of you have heard about the quadrivus therapy, so I'm going to tell you about our first study. This is uh, Alina Ekma um, on the right, and she went to Vietnam and she learned um, how to do the quadrivus therapy from uh, this woman named One, and One has since passed on. And according, according to Alina, she feels that this quadrivus therapy reduces fibrosis in the walls of the veins and improves the subcutaneous adipose tissue structure. And you all know that if you have lipedema or Durkheim's disease, your fat tissue has a structure. When you feel it, it's thick, it's nodular, it's got masses in it. You can see vasculature. And I wanted to thank the two ladies who put me in touch with Alina. I got a ping on Facebook, and I was like, okay, well, whatever. I hear of a lot of things. I'm not looking into it. And then the second ping came through, and I looked at it, and um, here we are. So what is quadrivus therapy? It's a manual therapy. It's a full body therapy, head to the bottom of the feet. It's a deep tissue treatment, so it's not a manual lymphatic drainage, which is a more surfacey treatment. This goes deep into the tissue. It, um, likely improves the quality and function of the subcutaneous adipose tissue. Uh, we think it improves all the vasculature, but we have to prove that. And according to Alina Ekma, lipedema is reversible and quadrivus therapy is a long-term solution, but it does take time in order to get uh, to a point where the lipedema tissue looks like it's no longer present. So I wanted you to watch a film that she put together so you could actually see how deep the treatment was. And if we have no sound, that's okay. The quadrivus therapy is an intensive massage therapy that activates the self-healing ability in the different tissue layers throughout the body and focuses especially on the vascular system. A quadrifast therapist uses intensive, deep scraping and hook techniques to untangle and open tissues. The microcirculation is activated and tissues are able to function properly again. This has a healing and slimming effect and inhibits the formation of new fat and moisture deposition. Muscles, joints and ligaments become more flexible. Waste products and excess fat are cleared by the body. The body gets in a good condition and gets back its original and natural shape. Because the method is a hands-on therapy, it is very body friendly. A quadrifast therapist is trained to feel which pressure the tissue needs, so the massage is balanced with the energy and pain level of the client. The pain decreases as the tissue is improving and clients experience the quadrifast therapy at the end of a course as an intensive but very relaxing massage. So um, in the research study that we conducted, we had seven subjects, and we only had seven because we only had one therapist, and she worked six hours a day, six days a week. Our average age was around 46. Uh, we had um, all European Americans, um, three of them had some Native American blood, they were all non-Hispanic. Their average weight was 90 kilograms, their average BMI was 33, so they were considered obese. Uh, we took some other measurements of their waist-hip ratio, and you can see the waist-hip ratio was less than one, so they were gynoid. Uh, the majority were stage two lipedema. We had one with stage three lipedema, and three of them said they had diffuse Durkheim's disease, and they developed their SAT disorder around age 20, 21. Six of them had pain. One said she had no pain because she had had some stem cell therapy. This was our study outline. We did baseline studies on the left, then they went through 11 treatments. We repeated caliper and leg volume measurements, and then we repeated the, the baseline studies at the end um, after the last treatment, including caliper and leg volume measurements. And then each uh, therapy session was 90 minutes. This is the pain scale that we used. So if you've done the research study, this is the pain scale we used there. So the um, average pain was around two, and the highest level of pain was around four. So this is what happened for the pain scales over time as the study went on. So you can see they started around four, and they ended around two for the highest, and they started around two um, and ended below two for the average daily pain. And the difference between the baseline and end-of-study pain scores 
uh, for average and highest pain was significantly different. So here's our leg volume measurement. I know it's kind of a busy slide, but you've got your baseline volume measures here. And then after 11 sessions, uh, you could see there's a reduction in volume here. Here's the percent change, and this is the p-value. And then they had one final session, and you can see that the volumes decreased even further, and we had a significant uh, volume change in the upper leg, lower leg, and the entire leg. We also use this caliper, which many of you in this room have already experienced. And we measured uh, skin folds all over the body. And when you have a sick area of fat tissue, you're gonna have a, a thick skin fold. If you don't have much fat or fluid in a skin fold, it'll be smaller. So same uh, outline, here are our baseline caliper measurements. This is before the last quadrivus therapy, and you can see we already reduced uh, the size of the caliper measurements in many different areas. And then after the final quadrivus therapy, we saw a significant reduction in every single area that we looked at except for the hand. None of these ladies had lymphedema, and none of them had fat on their hands, so it's not surprising the hand would not change. They all developed bruising after the therapy, uh, primarily in the upper arms. Uh, and then there were uh, scattered bruises on the rest of the body. But interestingly, um, I'd say, oh my gosh, you're, you're so bruised. And they said, I don't care. I, I, I need more. <laughs> um, so uh, all seven women said that they could see, feel more of their bones after the quadrivus therapy, so they could feel more bones all over their body. We also did a hands-on assessment of nodules in the body. We examined 11 areas, and we found a reduction from nine areas affected down to about three, and that just missed significance with a p-value of 0.05. We also assessed for fibrosis, how thick and hard is the fat tissue, and we found that we got a significant decrease in fibrosis in the nodules, uh, on the hips, and in the groin. We did not see a significant difference in heaviness, but these women were stage two and tended not to have very many heavy areas. We also did the lower extremity functional scale, which you will also do on the questionnaire part of our research study. The lower the number, the worse you are. And I have some patients with lipedema and Durkheim's disease who have scores in the teens. Um, I had one in the single digits. Um, but you can see that our ladies were pretty functional. So their baseline score was in the 60s, but they increased to about 75. So they were, um, had a significant improvement in their uh, quality of life in terms of their ability to function with their legs. So our conclusions are that um, manual therapy, called quadrivus therapy, improved the quality of the subcutaneous adipose tissue. Uh, we think that the quality improved in the nodules. We got a reduction in fibrosis. We got a reduction in thickness of the tissue. There was decreased pain, reduced leg limb volume, and improved function by all seven women that had lipedema and some had Durkheim's disease. Uh, the goal um, is to try and get more therapists in the US trained to do the quadrivus therapy so that it will be covered by insurance and you would just go to your physical therapist or your occupational therapist and you can get your manual lymphatic drainage but you could also get your quadrivus therapy. We finished quadrivus two. We had six of the seven initial women. They all wanted to come back. The seventh wanted to come back but um, there was some illness in the family. And so we invited a, a woman who had a stage one lipedema and Durkheim's disease. And we are processing through that data right now. And I wanted to show you, this is a mass on the leg of uh, one of the women in the Quadrivus study. And uh, she came back for Quadrivus two. And at the end of the study, this was gone. And we think that this is a, a, a vessel in the leg that had become sclerotic and fibrotic. And this is obviously fluid around this vessel. And this is on the lower leg. And we're looking at the skin on top, fat here, and then um, obviously this mass there. And we even tried to get an MRI on there to locate it, and it was gone. So thank you so much.